Flow like water, flow like water, flow like water, flow like water, flow like water. My name is Trayshawn Watkins. I'm a student in the eighth grade. I live in Queens, New York, and this is the DYCD at home filmmaking series with John Beckham. What made you want to do a documentary about people that make pizza? That was with my brother at his pizzeria. So I had access to somebody that had a really cool story um, that was obsessed with pizza and that had a beautiful pizzeria. So I knew his story and I knew about pizza enough through him that I felt that I had enough information to make a cool little documentary about it. Why is a car a great place for filming an interview? I think visually a car is good because there's stuff happening in the background. So just to documentary filmmakers out there, and this is something that I learned pretty recently, head and shoulders interviews like this, static frames, mm -hmm. they are becoming more and more obsolete. They are becoming more and more dated and less intriguing to networks and to viewers. So as long as it doesn't take away from from the interview, it shows movement, and it also uh, can help the story move. In, in Pizza People, we went to a barbecue place, pick up his barbecue brisket, and we talked to him on the drive there, and it kind of informed the viewer that, hey, this is what he does every week to go pick up the brisket, and it kind of brings the viewer into his life and world even more. Since filmmaking on location can be risky, how do you plan for weather and potential roadblocks? So you would want to, the day before, or even the week before, check out the weather forecast. And if it looked like it could rain, I would bag up my iPhone or bag up my camera. And I'm talking about, like, you could trash, like, I've trash bagged my Canon C200, where you, like, put it over and we shot in snow, and the only thing we're showing was the lens and the record button, you hit it through the bag. So call whoever you're interviewing and say, hey, it looks like it's going to rain. Are you down to do an interview with an umbrella in the rain? And if they are, get it, because it rains in people's neighborhoods. So that's some real stuff. And that's what documentary really shoots for a lot, is getting the realness. Yep. Do you have any general advice for filming interviews, like how to frame the shot or how to make the person you're talking to feel comfortable? Now, there's no set rules. but. Typically you want some space between your subject and the background. And if you're shooting with a nice camera, you'll have um, you know, the aperture set the right way and the background will be blurry, which will cause no distractions. And to make someone feel comfortable, just try to be a person and not be an interviewer and do your research, know what you're talking about and who you're talking to. How did growing up in Prince George's County, Maryland help create this documentary? Basketball was a big part of me growing up. I had thought about this idea for like 10 years. And as more and more people from the county started going to the NBA, that combined with the fact that every time I went out of town, I was one of the best players in the gym. But when I would come home, I was just another guy playing ball. Those two factors really started making me think, you know, there's something special going on here and we need to, you know, make a story about it. When you think of a documentary, how do you come about getting topics? So you're, you're talking about how, how do you figure out which idea is the one you should act on? With film, you really want to ask yourself, does your topic have things that can be supported by moving pictures and, or still pictures or photography? Do we have footage of that stuff? Can we find archival footage for that? So do we have the video to support this story? Number two thing is, do I care about this thing enough? Were my interested enough about this thing to spend a lot of time on it? Was there anything that was unexpected that shifted your original plan for the script? We didn't have a script. We had an outline that we wanted to do. I knew that there were more pros coming out of this county than anywhere else in the, in the world. I also knew it was the most affluent African-American county in the world. And I knew that these things kind of intersected. But the story constantly changed. The more and more that we talk to people, interviews will sometimes help shape your story because they're going to give you firsthand information that aren't, isn't available in books or in research or on Google. What is some key advice from 
filming that you would tell aspiring student filmmakers? Plan your day, plan the story, research the story, do everything you can before you start shooting to know exactly what you're trying to get. So like when you first started, how was it with like making your schedule and making sure that everything was organized? So getting started, I, I went online and tried to go onto YouTube and learn as much as I could about pre-production from other filmmakers. And basically you follow their lead. Um, I'm a big believer in that if you believe, if you think somebody's doing it the best, try to do what they're doing and try to mimic what they're doing until you find, kind of like find your own process. What is a movie that kids should watch to help them get more information? Go watch Hoop Dreams. It's about two kids growing up uh, with the dream of playing basketball and their separate paths and how it happens. Um, it's pretty amazing, really exciting, uh, not boring. What would you say to kids who shy away from the documentary genre? This documentary is a slice of real life. It's not pretend. And if you find the right subject, it can enlighten people, it can teach people, it can change people's lives, and it can truly scare you, it can truly make you laugh because it's real. What is some homework that kids should do when they finish watching this episode to learn more about documentary filmmaking? One is just know what the term public domain means. It's going to be a quick Google search and you'll find it out. And then go to archive.org. Whatever topic you have, go to archive.org. There's a search button there and it's going to pull up all kinds of footage about that. And this is a place you can go to to see if your topic has supporting video or photos behind it and those videos are going to be in public domain which means you could rip them down and use them in your documentary to support your topic all right thank you for um, being here thank you for being on the show and stay safe and enjoy the rest of your evening